Ja, så du skal læse sig sige, at så skal vi til noget helt andet. Vi skal have en gaffelpris overlandelse. Og fordelen er for denne, den ældste gaspris i Danmark, er på plads, det var spage til en stor glæde. Blandt andet på grund af den over 40 år gamle stilistik og begrundelse, jeg citerer. Men hver person fysisk og juridisk, der gennem musikalsk udøvelse, kompositionsvirksomhed, gramofon eller bladudgivelse, skribent, film eller oplysningsvirksomhed eller på anden måde i Danmark virker for eller har virket for jazzmusikens udbredelse og for kendskab til jazzmusik som kunstner. Årets prismodtager dækker op til flere af disse områder og har i det hele taget et generelt blad, der er beskedenhed til at tage pusen for de fleste. For at starte fra en ende af, begyndte med klaverer som 6-årig, tog trompeten op af en artik. Allerede som 12 år var en kabelmester. Han blev klaveret og blev foretrukne, og det er i den grad, at han fra en forholdsvis ung alder og frem er kombineret med tabilitet og så, og jeg nævner en film. Til Baker i Kønnet med Rodney, Joe Henderson, Woody Shaw, Pepper Adams, Uber Irving, der flere. Clark Terry, Art Pepper, Sam Stig, Herb Ellis, Bolt og Frank Kirk. Vi stopper lige her, for at få med, at han har været fast af kontør for The Divine Sarah Warren. Men det var, som jeg antydet, kun en del af hans virke. Siden løbende med sine egne musikalske aktiviteter, havde prismodtageren allerede i dag et omfattende arbejde med undervisning i klaver, sammenspil, orkesterledelse, komposition, så det var med en værdien bagage, at prismodtageren bosatte sig i Danmark den 3. december 1982. Startens arrangør og komponist for DR's Big Band. Og denne del af hans virksomhed førte til et stærkt inspirerende samarbejde med det daværende Kyrus Big Band, som resulterede medlemmer på en række CD'er som komponist og pianist. Så Aarhus Domkirkes 8. års jubilæer i 2001 komponerede han således et værk fra Big Band og en ny skolebars kor. Det skal også for mig faktisk nævnes, at hans forløbende største værk har været for 900 musikere, omfattende 40 orkester fra de nordiske lande. Men det største betydning har han haft som lærer for de studerende på landets konservatorier. Efter de første halvdel af 80'erne er han fungeret som klaverlærer, og han fra 2002 var fast ansat på de nye musikkonservatorier hvor de studerende har oplevet ham som fantastisk inspirerende underviser, som har en stor betydning ikke kun for pianister, men for alle studerende, som han har været i kontakt med. Han har sin egen helt originale tilgang til musik, hvor han fx arbejder med en profession ved at få de studerende til at lytte til toner inde i sig selv. Rigsmodtageren præsenterer 30 års virksomhed som en helt unik inspirator med en heldig ild, der smitter. Jeg vil gerne runde af med en udtalelse her fra scenen. Han er gået. Der understreger han spændvide som udøvende musik. Han er en musiker, der fagner utrolig bredt. Han kan sin standards, stor kender af symfonisk musik. Og så har han det der gospel soul Og han kombinerer alle tingene. Den mand kan virkelig få klaveret til at vokse til en helt symfoni. Han er en af og en af dem og modtager af årets gaffelpris er Buds Læsing.
Is it, is it point? I'm going to go over to English. Sorry. If I told you what I know, what I actually know, I don't think that most of you would believe me. I have a hard time believing in myself. But music, like Light, uh, it, it wants out, it, it really wants to be experienced by, even nature is crazy about, about music. And I actually had an experience with that where in around 1976 I was up in Yosemite Valley uh, California, which is, I think, I think the most beautiful spot on the earth with these huge mountains and this valley and everything. And it was around Christmas time and I actually, I used to play the horn and I had the horn with me to see how it would sound in the valley. And it was winter and it was about dark and I was, I walked way out in the, in the valley there in the mountains and, uh, and I was watching my feet because the grass was pretty high. And I walked right into a pack of deer. And they were sitting about as, they were standing about as far away from me as Herbie. Like, dude, that's, there's Herbie. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. You got me. And, um, and I went, what? And they were like, what? And we, we, we totally surprised each other. And then a voice, very clear, you came to play the horn. So they stood there. There was maybe ten, somewhere like that. And real slow, I got down and I got the horn out. And I, the point was was to hear how it would sound in the valley. And I just played like a long time. I don't have so much wind now. I can't do it like I did. did. But I just played like. La
trying to say is, is that part of my musical life definitely brought me to Denmark. And definitely a whole bunch of what I always wanted to do and would never in the world have gotten a chance to do. I was offered immediately when Eric Bousson talked, took me over to the radio and had me start. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, when I got off the plane in, on December 3rd, I had a message um, that in five days there was a program at Mount Marshall that they had a live thing, this was in 82. And, and I had to have, uh, I think it was three arrangements ready to go. I had five days for them. And then Eric put me on all kind of totally impossible experience, but or update. And, uh, and I just had to find a hand to do it for the Unholy Zone Australian, the big band, the core, and everything. But what I'm trying to get at is that the, uh, my musical life has been actually able to unfold in a completely, I, I didn't know that way, by coming to Denmark. And I would say that the town of Argus and Ben Jensen and Herbie and where is he? He's there, Albert. And all them wonderful motherfuckers at Ben <laughs> Uh They're just, they just, uh, it was such a rich thing. And, and, and of course, being able to uh, come into a working relationship with Kluber and his wonderful band, and also um, uh, be able to write all these. Um, school songs with Kruger's wife, and I'm standing here, man, and damn, I can't remember your name, that great name. Um, of course I can't, Kruger, and what's your name? Lisa, yeah, Lisa, I'm, I'm so sorry. But um, I, I make a whole lot of music together. Anyway, I'm very grateful to ours, really, really, really. And to be able to fold, to get, not because it can go to the dance, and to fold a recognition for the jazz soulscape. And I know that that's a bunch of motherfuckers that love having fun. And, and that they say, hey man, you're cool. And I, I feel really in, if you understand. And I thank you all. And I am so thrilled to present our group. This is actually, as I think I said, our first official public performance. And these two guys, Marius and Jesper, are, are I, I wish you could have the fun that it is to play with these guys. Uh, it's just great fun. And I hope it's okay for you to listen to. Um, but, the, but, I'm sorry. The, the, no, 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 it is hard to understand. So quit that, that'll never happen. <laughs> um, but for example, we played one song and then I looked over and asked, yes, should we get to the other part? And he said, no place more. And then I go into my natural, wow, what do we want to play? And, and then, uh, yes, for he begins to play some beautiful stuff like he always plays. And that's the whole thing about the, the suiting and the music, is that if you don't have to worry, it, it will totally take, take over. And it's not going to sound like the other thing, it's impossible. Like, just, it's in the hands of the music. So, uh, with that said, I don't know what your plan is, yes, but I think we should zoom some more. <laughs> is that okay? No, you know, you know what? Actually, I'd like to play a little tune for you. And then we can see. Is that fine? <laughs> and, and also, just to make one little correction, there in your lovely speech, um, uh, this thing about listening for the music inside, it was actually Lee Conners um, that we were, we were going to play a concert, a duo concert back in 86 or something. And we rehearsed. And while we rehearsed, he said, hey man, do you hear everything you play? I said, well, not everything, but I try to play as much of what I hear as possible. He says, that's cheating. 
And I didn't know what he was talking about. I didn't know if there was some jazz police to say at all. <laughs> or what? But now I understand. I really do understand. He was talking about I was cheating myself. There was a lot more fun to be had by not cheating. And he actually gave me an exercise. And he said, if you do this for two years, you'll begin to understand. That I was in 86, so this is like 20, no, it's 30 years ago. And I'm starting to understand. So I would like to dedicate this next song, which is the song that the Conners told me to start with. And it's called, oh, you remember it. You remember it. You know, I don't have to tell you what it is. But anyway, I'm going to play that for you now. 